Please excuse the background noise of the power hammer that's warming up and the gas forge. Uh, the reason that they're on is because the next thing I'm going to be doing is uh, flattening down slightly these spheres, the uh, solid spheres that are on the ground, because they are going to be going um, between the square bar and the underside of uh, this hoop. Um, so yeah, I'll be getting them hot and then just flattening them down a smidge. Now, uh, I do have to admit to a, uh, well I don't actually, ha I don't have to admit to anything, <laughs> stuff you. <laughs> um, no, I should admit to a, a silly mistake that I made at the end of last week, um, which was welding together this hoop and this hoop and welding them together at this junction and this junction and uh, I think really the cold weather last week just got to me and what I did is um, what I had planned to do all along which was notch out here and here and then uh, slot it over that and weld them together because what I'd been what I thought at that point was like oh I'll do that and then I'll just drop it over this over the sphere I'll just drop it over the sphere as a pair but as soon as I welded them together, what I realised is that the gap from here, there, to there isn't big enough to get the sphere through. So, thankfully, welding them together only took me about an hour, and it only took me about an hour to cut them apart and hide all the scuff marks. Um, so. In any case, what, I've, uh, what it told me is actually what I have to do is um, squash these spheres to size to the internal, to fit the internal gap down there and there, weld the spheres in, weld this hoop to the squashed spheres and then put this hoop into its position here and here and weld them together and so the reason that I'd actually made this silly mistake of pre-welding this one to this was that I thought it's going to be far easier to get them perpendicular to each other when they're um, before you know the spheres in there but obviously that just can't be the case. So what I'm gonna to have to do is just figure it out as I go, um, how I'm gonna get this to sit perpendicular to this one. Anyway, say la vie.
slightly cheated here because um, I did actually crush two different sizes of sphere. There was 60 mil ones and 50 mil ones because I wasn't sure um, what width I wanted from the, the, the flattened sphere. Um, so as you can see, the 60 mil ones are so much wider than the 50 mil ones. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with the 50 mil ones because these 60 mil ones look a bit sort of OTT. Um, I mean, you sort of stand back at a distance and look, but I just feel like, I don't know, it, feel, it, looks, it looks a bit sort of cartoonish. It's a bit too big. Look at that crow in the background is going for it, isn't he? Um, crow? I meant cockerel. Um, so they will be going top and bottom, and I reckon what I'll do is I'll weld around here, 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 and here, and then when the um, the flat bar on edge goes over the top, I'll weld along the sides of the flat bar at the contact point here. Here's my target lines that the um, crushed sphere has to sit within. So, da, 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 da. as always, doing this one hand is a bit tricky. That looks about right. I'm not going to take that any further. Uh, I've done the other side um, already. I'm just going to weld on two sides for the mo whilst I um, throw on two seams rather than completing all four seams whilst I check that the, the hoop goes over properly because otherwise I've just got a, more welds to cut and undo. This has become quite tricky. <laughs> so I've roughly lined this up to how it is in the sample but or the, the scale model but this needs to be rotated down this way a little bit more um so uh because i've pre-notched here and here uh bah, 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 where's that one it's over here isn't it i've pre-notched that there and down in here what I've got to do is get everything leveled up so that this ring, because I've pre-marked this outer ring at the point at which I want the notches to go. So like pre-marked it as in, ah, a bit difficult to see, but there's a, some marks there and marks over there because I want where I welded it before to line up with the same weld positions because then just all scuffs and whatever will be hidden. Um, means I've got to get, I guess, something on the bench so that this hoop can sit level uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I guess I've got to get something like on all four sides up to equal height on the bench so that this hoop down here can sit level on there and I can rotate the sphere and the, that hoop to the correct position to match the sample. Uh, because if I get the everything wrong, then that will send this hoop, this horizon hoop, off kilter and it won't be like spirit level level hmm i think i've found a solution to this uh, a number of years ago i made these little adjustable height stands um just from bits of s scrap that i had left over from a job and i have three of them 
So what I've done is on these sides that I've put a little circle on, I've elevated them to 400 mil off the bench. And because my big uh, eight foot by four foot cast table is um, spirit level level, I know that when I put a spirit level from the top of there, top of there, or top of there to top of there, or there to there, that is also level. So my thinking is to get the hoop that goes under on, then use the hoist to lift this up, and then I can put the other hoop down level this way, so I know that's sitting right, and then I just have to rotate the sphere and the hoop that's on it to the point at which everything marries up with the lines that I've already pre-marked. It's going to be a bit of a wrestle, but you know, in theory, it's it, the theory holds. I think I'm going to start from the point of just getting this elevated a little bit with some bits of wood. New thought. Get the this one. Can you see that? Yeah, you can. That one seated into this one. Tack weld them together, then maneuver them as a pair so that I'm not trying to maneuver three things at once. So once these are tack welded together, then I can maneuver that into position because this will be resting on there. I might have to increase the heights of these, I don't know. But um, that would at least then I could mean that I could rotate that independently because, because they'd be tack welded together. Um, this isn't gonna flop around. Now it's obvious that I need to adjust the heights of the stands, but I've got the not this now seated 
into the right area. Yeah, I'm going to have to adjust the heights of the stands, um, probably raising them up a bit. Um, but for now, at least, I'm going to tack weld either side, which is then going to allow me to twist things around. The... Oh. So what I can at least in theory now do is move the inner sphere separate to these two which are tack welded together. I think the first thing has got to be raising these up a little bit by, oh, I don't know, another 50 mil, 100 mil, using the hoist to take the weight of this and then slowly lower it down in.
I'm afraid there's quite a jump here because um, what I ended up doing um, was committing to some of the welds. Uh, so up here there's full weld there and on, same on the other side. I've fully welded in there and the back side as well. What was happening was I was nudging it here, there and everywhere and I was kind of chasing myself around it and then what I ended up also realising is that I didn't have any packers between, um, probably the best example is the equator which is this one going down there and up there. So what I had was a completely eccentric sphere in the hoop so it was swung down this way effectively because it was pivoting down below and up on the the crushed spheres but the who the the sphere was still like swung down like this so uh i managed to with some packers put into there and down there um pull it center but it was such a job and I was going backwards and forwards, I, I thought the best thing to do is really just um, get to the stage of having got it centred and then turn it over and show you the welding from the bottom because I've still got to do the bottom uh, crushed sphere and the underside of this ring. It was, very, it was a real battle to get the... Um, uh, but the, the, the two level um, because I spent quite a while getting these little stands level but then also this one wasn't standing vertical so it was just a real case of nudging things backwards forwards backwards forwards here there and everywhere so you know if I'd recorded it or I mean I was doing that for a good you know hour or two oh, yeah. Oh. Now with it flipped over, you can far uh, clearer see like the the uh, 
my target weld area at the top of the crushed sphere and then the notched out areas um, here. So it's, and obviously it's the same on the other side. It's looking good.